Well, the post came in today. What's this from Maxitrack in the UK? Attention, Rodney. Someone has some explaining to do. Hi, this is Stan. And no, I didn't leave my phone and credit card laying around. Just having some fun with you. But let's take a look at what came in the post. This from Exitrek in the UK. Wow, look at that. These are nice. Ever since we put Rodney together, he's really been without a nameplate like all of his cousins over in the UK and he's been feeling bad about it so we decided to remedy that plus it's been a while since he's had any bench time so we need to do a proper cleanup there's a one little tiny project in the cab that I want to care for and of course we want to get him all spiffed up for the dance with his new nameplates so let's get busy Well, he's pretty dusty. Uh, Rodney's not a shelf sort of a locomotive. He stays on the track, hooked up to the wagons, and he spends all of his time in the car barn, and he's ready to go. I just unplug the charger, flip the switch, and we can get to work. But it does mean that he gets dusty and dirty, and uh, I should probably do a proper cleanup on him. He's pretty easy to lift, as long as I take the battery out. A little bit of a grunt, but here's the bonnet here, and then a 12-volt battery goes in here. And that's one convenient thing about electric locomotives. They're always ready to go as long as you keep the battery charged. There's really absolutely no hassle, no mess all the time, and that suits me really well. So I keep him on the charger. And let's take a look in the cab for a second. So let's take a look in here while you can see his cab needs to be hoovered out. Some dust and dirt still gets in there even though I've, I've got doors and uh, plastic in the windows. But this is the charging cord here. It's got a little rubber cap on the end. But I've always kind of worried that if I mess up with this cover or if it comes off or whatever, I've got open terminals here that reflect the two terminals on the battery and so I always worry that this is going to come into contact and create some sparks so I think what I'm going to do today is just put a little cover plate on it you can see here these lines are going down to the motors and this goes up into the main switch and then onto the uh, circuit board so there's a potential of having uh, 12 volts across here when he's running and if something should happen to the cap on this cable if he should touch down we could have some excitement that we don't want so as long as I've got him in here we're gonna clean him up and I'm just gonna put a little uh, extra safety cover on that so I've got a little piece of uh, clear plastic left over from doing the windows I think I'm just going to cut a little rectangle, let's say two inches by two and a half, here at the table saw, and that should work just great. Okay. Let's smooth out those edges. There we go. Well, let's drill a hole right in the middle. I already have a screw that holds that block down, so we'll just lengthen that screw a little bit and just put a hole in the middle of this, and that should work fine.
and there we go that's all protected and even if this cable starts to go crazy without the cap on it can't do any damage cause any harm there I should have done that at the very beginning of the project but I just forgot about it all right I got it measured out and marked in place with blue tape I think I'm going to use double stick tape I've got some industrial strength and instead of trying to mount him with screws I don't want to mess up that beautiful paint job they did on that we'll give a little wipe down a little alcohol wipe down very gently and the same for the back of the nameplate a little alcohol wipe clean off any residue and grease and such well I can tell you this stuff is pretty powerful pretty gooey I started by putting one long strip on the back but I couldn't get it trimmed to fit and I couldn't really work with it very well so I decided to go with just three patches that I could cut small enough ahead of time that I didn't have to try and trim so let's see how this works out And there we got the handrail back in. All right, let's do the other side. And as long as he's on the exam table here, let's just touch up the lube on the bottom, on the wheel sets, and on the gears. And there he is, all spiffied up, ready to get back to work, proudly displaying his nameplates. Wow, that looks great. Thank you, Maxitrack, for fabricating these nameplates for me. This little shunter is built from the power chassis that Maxitrack offers, 5-inch gauge, and then I freelanced my own body on top of that. And I did a two-part series covering some of the highlights and details of the build, and I'll put links for those down below. Here's just a quick sample of what that two-part series was like. So let me dig into the directions. I've already read through them, but I want to go through a little more carefully now so that I don't hook anything up backwards. And let's start assembling this kit. Let's place the wheel sets down on the bench and these little uh, Delrin gears toward me. Now let's take the lower chassis plate and we'll lay it on these wheel sets and we'll align the holes. All right, the plates setting on the two wheel sets, the cutouts on the plate are on the gear side. And I just ran these bolts down through here to make sure that the holes all line up. If at first when you put this lower plate on, you can't find the holes, it just needs to be flipped end for end. But you do want the notch on the gear side. These aren't tightened or assembled they're just down through the holes just to roughly orient the wheel set. Then we want to place the front and rear buffer plates and slip them on. This is cut very precisely so be careful this edge might be a little sharp. Well let's get the battery back into Rodney, get him back on the rails and put him back to work. Well, this is Stan saying thanks so much for watching, and I hope I see you right here next time on the Crow's Nest Railroad.
Thank you.